welcome back to class. We are taking treatment of compensation for loss of office in line with the provision of the Finance Act of 2020. Treatment of compensation for loss of office in line with the provision of the Finance Act of 2020. Uh, uh, it two, that is prior to the provision of the Finance Act of 2019, Section 36. Section 36 exempt sums are obtained by way of compensation of damages. Section 36 exempt sums obtained by way of uh, compensation. Sums obtained. Sums obtained by way of uh, compensation. Damages. Compensation or damages by way of uh, for any injury, any compensation or damages received for any injury or injury suffered by an individual to his person or in his profession or vocation. So this includes when the injury from the bear, slander, or uh, enticement, or uh, enticement. So some of them by way of compensation for loss of office exceeding uh, 10,000 naira, exceeding 10,000 naira in any way of assessment is however chargeable. So what this means is that any compensation for loss of office you received below 10,000 naira uh, is exempted from uh, capital gains tax act. So uh, because in mean, this amount is too uh, minimal, okay, probably. Uh, these amounts may be a uh, big amount as at the time the law is uh, enacted. Okay, so uh, because of this, the Finance Act of 2019 amended this section 36 of the Capital Gains Tax Act. Okay, so with the implementation of the Finance Act of 2019, compensation for loss of office uh, has now been uh, reviewed from 10,000. Uh, towards to uh, 10 million naira. Okay, so that is compensation for loss of office below 10 million naira is now exempted from capital gains tax, uh, like uh, like the 10,000 we used to have. So this 10,000 uh, was revealed up to 10 million naira, and so this is coming from the Finance Act of 2019. So also the Finance Act of 2020. States that compensation for loss of office up to 21 naira should uh, be exempted from capital gains tax due on excess above 10 million naira. Okay, so any excess above 10 million naira is to be deducted by the payer and remitted within the time specified under the payer's UN regulation. So let's assume the compensation for loss of office is now received. Is a 15 million naira. So you first exempt 10 million naira from the 15 million naira and charge the balance of 5 million naira to capital gains tax at the rate of 10 percent. So meaning that this person will be paying it, will pay 500,000 as capital gains tax on the compensation uh, received, on the compensation received, and uh, together on the compensation received. So, and then um, for retirement uh, benefit scheme, uh, this is in line with section 29, retirement benefit scheme, retirement benefit scheme, section 29, section 29, uh, again from uh, retirement benefit schemes, you know, being from the car benefit scheme is different from compensation uh, for loss of office, okay? So again, from the car benefit scheme, it shall not be a chargeable gain if according to a person from any disposal of investment held by him as part of any supernation fund. So don't, don't forget to discuss where supernation fund is. Okay, so it could be society fund, pension fund, and the likes. Okay, so but uh, 
So, uh, we have said that real parts only were uh, found in the approval that section 20 of the Personal Income Tax Act. Uh, the gain shall be exempt from being a tangible gain uh, to the same extent only as the income derived from the assets will be exempt under that section. Again, a gain from a uh, retirement benefit scheme shall not be a tangible gain. In short, a gain from a retirement benefit scheme shall not be or shall not be a tangible gain. One, if according to a person from any disposal of investment held by you or of any supernatural fund, you may probably you receive a pension. So when you receive pension, you don't take up that gain status on what on pension. Okay. So that but uh but that real part only of fund is approved under the section twenty of the personal income tax act. The gain shall also be exempt from being a chargeable gain to the same extent only as income derived from the asset would be exempt under that section. Okay, because uh, for the money saved, uh, been saving uh, with the uh, RFA, okay, or the PFA, okay, so the uh, the beneficiary must have been, must have benefited the PE. And don't forget that uh, the scope of capital gains tax uh, does not uh, does not covers uh, uh, transition of uh, income that does not cover income tax. Okay. So also if uh, so so gain from the tax benefit scheme shall not be a chargeable gain. If according to a person from his disposal of investment held by him uh, as part of any national provident fund or any other uh, retirement uh, benefit scheme or any other retirement benefit schemes established under the provisions of any act or enactment for employees throughout Nigeria and such gains shall be exempt from tax under these acts and the personal income tax act. Also, no tangible gain shall accrue to any person on the disposal of the right to or to any part of any sum payable out of any supernation fund. Again, a uh, supernation fund, supernation fund, supernation fund, supernation fund means a pension provident or uh, other retirement benefit fund society or uh, scheme approved society or scheme approved by the joint task board by the joint task board under section 20 under section 20 subsection under section 20 subsection 1 f of the personal income tax act gains accruing on disposal gain accruing on disposal of uh, investment gain accruing on disposal of investment Held as part of any uh, supernatural fund or other statutory retirement benefits, or other statutory retirement benefits scheme, retirement benefits scheme to so the same extent, to so the same extent as income derived to the same extent as income derived from the assets income derived from the assets would be exempted will be exempted under it under section 20 subsection 8 of the personal income tax 
at all together so for insurance policy insurance policy or policy of insurance for policy of insurance policy of insurance okay so you that I said to whether under the policy of insurance or otherwise is lost or destroyed and the capital sum received by way of compensation for the loss or destruction is applied within three years of receipt in acquiring, in acquiring another asset in replacement of the asset lost or destroyed the owner shall if his so claim be treated for the purposes of this act as if a as if the consideration as if the consideration for the disposal as if the consideration for the disposal of the old asset as if the consideration for the disposal of the old asset were uh, if otherwise of a greater amount of such amounts we have such amounts we have such amounts as would secure we have such amounts as would secure that on the disposal as would secure that on the disposal neither a loss neither a loss nor a gain neither a loss nor a gain occurs so in and then as if as if the amount as if the amount as if the amount of the consideration as if the amount of the consideration uh, for the acquisition as if the amount of the consideration for the acquisition of the new assets for the acquisition of the new assets we are reduced we are reduced by the excess of the amounts we are reduced by the excess of the amounts we are reduced by the excess of the amounts of the capital sum we are reduced by the excess of the amounts of the capital sum received of the capital sum received by way of compensation by way of compensation <coughs> or under the policy or under the policy of insurance or under the policy of uh, insurance together with any residual together with any residual or scrap value or scrap value over the amount of consideration over the amount of the consideration which is treated over the amount of the consideration which is treated as a receiving which is treated as receiving uh under it's under uh, paragraph under paragraph a of this subsection one under paragraph a of this subsection one also a claim shall not be made under subsection one of this uh section if part only of the capital sum is applied in acquiring the uh, new assets but if all of the capital uh, sum except for a part which is less than the amount of the gain whether a chargeable gain or not accruing on the disposal of the old assets is to be what is to be applied then the owner shall if he so claims be treated for the purpose of this act as if the amount of the gain so accruing we are reduced to the amount of the set part and if not all chargeable gain with a proportionate reduction in the amount of the chargeable gain and as if the amount 
of the consideration for the acquisition of the new assets were reduced by the amounts by which the gain is reduced under a paragraph A of this uh, subsection. All together. So now, uh, let's look at instances where no asset is acquired by the person paying the capital sum. Instances where no asset is acquired by the person paying the capital sum. And this is the line section uh, C of capital gain stars at instances where no assets instances where no asset is acquired instances where no asset is acquired by the person instances where no asset is acquired by the person paying the capital sum by the person paying the capital sum line section uh, section six so according to section six of this act the disposal of assets has taken place if uh, subject to any exemptions provided by this act there is for the purposes of assets by a person where capital sum is derived from a sale lease transfer an assignment a compulsory acquisition or any other disposition of assets no is telling that no asset is acquired by the person paying the capital sum and in particular where the capital sum is derived by way of compensation for any loss of office or employment, where any capital sum is received under a policy of insurance, and the risk of any kind of damage or injury to or the loss or depreciation of assets, where any capital sum is received in return for forfeiture or surrender of rights or refraining from exercising rights and uh, where any capital sum is received as consideration for use or uh, exploitation of any asset without prejudice to paragraph A which states that where the capital sum is derived by way of compensation for any loss of office or employment where any capital sum is received in connection with or uh, by virtue of any gain from any trade, business or uh, vocation okay so in this section and elsewhere in the capital gains tax acts okay so capital sum capital sum means any money capital sum means any money or money's worth means any money or money's worth which is not excluded which is not excluded from the consideration which is not excluded from the consideration taken into account from the consideration taken into account taken into account in the words in the computation taken into account in the computation under it, under section 11 under section 11 of these acts okay and references to disposal of assets include except where the contest otherwise requires references to a past disposal of assets and the disposal of assets we are interest or right in or over the asset is quoted by the disposal as well as where it subsists before the disposal and where on a person making a disposal any description of property derived from the asset remains undisposed of remains undisposed of out together so now let's uh, look at the date of acquisition and valuation of the uh, asset date of acquisition and the uh, valuation of assets for the purpose sorry date of acquisition and valuation of uh, assets so
for the purposes of this art, art that is capital investors art any asset acquired or disposed of by any person chargeable to tax shall uh, shall subject to section 23 subsection 4 of the capital gains tax act be deemed to have been so acquired or disposed of at the date of the contract to acquire or dispose of the assets or at a date which there is an enforceable right to acquire or a binding duty to dispose of the assets or any rights or interest therein and in particular where any contract is to be performed subject to any condition the date of acquisition or disposal of assets shall be deemed to be the date when the condition is satisfied but where a consideration of such a contract does not depend solely or mainly on the value of the assets at the time the condition is satisfied the acquisition or disposal shall be treated as if the contract had never been conditional in which case the date of the acquisition or disposal of the assets shall be the date of the contract shall be the date of the contract okay so where an option is conferred by virtue of any contract the date of acquisition or disposal of assets shall be the date when the option is exercised shall be the date when the option is what when the option is uh, exercised are we together so uh let's move to the uh next sub topic okay let's move to the next sub topic so which is artificial or fictitious uh, transactions artificial or fictitious transaction uh, I'm sorry uh, before we so we have artificial we have artificial or uh, fictitious or uh, fictitious uh, transactions artificial or fictitious transaction so we have the revenue services of the opinion that any disposition is an artificial or fictitious transaction or uh, where any transaction which reduces or uh, would reduce the amount of any capital gains tax is artificial or fictitious then the revenue service shall disregard such disposition and may direct that such uh, adjustment shall be made with respect to the liability of any person for the payment of capital gains tax as it considers appropriate so as to counteract the reduction of liability to capital gains tax effected or reduction which would otherwise be effected by the transaction and any person concerned with such transaction shall be accessible accordingly again section 21 subsection 1 stipulates that where the revenue service is of the opinion that any disposition is an artificial or fictitious transaction or where any transaction which reduces or would reduce the amount of any capital gains tax is artificial or fictitious the revenue service shall disregard such disposition and may direct that such adjustments shall be made with respect to the liability of any person for the payment of capital gains tax as it considers appropriate so as to counteract the reduction of uh, liability uh, of liability to capital gains tax effected or uh, reduction which would otherwise uh, be effected by the transaction and any person concerned with such transaction shall be accessible uh, accordingly okay uh, also subsection 21 subsection 2 states that any person in respect of whom any direction is made under this section shall have a right of appeal in like manner as though for those uh, as though for the purposes of the act such direction where an assessment to a capital gains tax act 
I said to capital gains tax again. Section uh, 21 subsection 2 states that any person in respect of whom any direction is made under this section shall have a right of appeal in like manner as though for the purposes of the act such direction were an assessment to capital gains tax act. So disposition includes any trust in line with section 21 subsection 3 disposition disposition includes any trust grants convenience convenience agreements or arrangements agreements or arrangements okay so this is this uh Definition under section 21, subsection 3, subsection A. So, transactions between connected persons shall be deemed to be artificial or petitions, if, in the opinion of the revenue service, those transactions have not uh, been made on terms which might fairly have been expected to have been made by persons engaged in the same or similar activities dealing with another one or dealing with one another at arm's length okay again transaction or transaction between connected persons or later parties shall be deemed to be artificial or fictitious even in the opinion of the revenue service those transactions have been have not been made on terms which might fairly have been made between uh persons engaged in similar or same activities uh dealing with one another at arm's length so uh, also uh, section 21 subsection 3 subsection c uh, states that in relation to any direction made under this section the provision of the act as to appeals against an assessment shall be fit as if such direction were an assessment uh, on its own were an assessment on its own are we together okay so uh we cannot move to the uh, last part of this short video which is part disposal of assets and baggage comprising two or more transactions part disposal of assets and baggage comprising two or more transactions so i uh, have taken part disposal of assets in our previous videos in our previous video so now we are concentrating on the parties comprising two or more transactions and probably we may uh, take uh, the past disposal in brief again okay so we are seeing the bargain comprises two or more transactions whereby assets are disposed of those transactions shall be treated for the purposes of computing capital gains as a single disposal again where a single bargain comprises two or more transactions whereby assets are disposed of those transactions to be treated for the purpose of computing capital gains as a single disposal so here separate considerations are agreed or uh, purported to be agreed for only two or more transactions comprised in one bargain whether transactions whether assets are disposed of or not those considerations shall be treated as all together constituting an entire consideration for the transactions and shall be apportioned uh, shall be apportionable uh, between them accordingly okay so here any apportionment under uh, this section shall result in lesser consideration than that agreed or purported to be agreed in the bargain being attributable to the disposal of the assets then the separate considerations agreed or purported to be agreed in respect of those assets uh, shall be deemed to be the concentration for which those assets are disposed of do you understand so uh for every asset that uh probably they were they are this uh, they are they are uh probably purchased or disposed of in bits okay 
uh, probably three to two or more uh, different transactions, but they were all negotiated together. Okay, they were all negotiated together. Uh, this uh, disposal deemed to be or to be a single uh, disposal for the fathers, and uh, they were uh, negotiated uh, together. Okay, so uh, that is it, it, it is a single uh, bargain. Uh, together, so when separate considerations are agreed or purported to be agreed for any two or more transactions comprised in one bargain, where transactions, where other transactions whereby assets are disposed of or not, those considerations shall be treated as all together, constituting an entire consideration for the transactions and shall be apportionable between them accordingly. Okay, so also where any apportionment under this section shall result in lesser consideration than that agreed or purported to be agreed in the bargain being attributable to the disposal of the assets, the separate considerations agreed or purported to be agreed in respect of those assets shall be deemed to be the consideration for which those assets are disposed of. So now let's look at part disposal again. Remember, uh, we mentioned that when an asset is partly disposed, okay, so the consideration reward uh, will be uh, apportioned to the cost of the asset, known as known the market value of the uh, of the undisposed part of the asset. Okay, so the cost to be apportioned to the past disposed shall be the proportion that the consideration for the disposal bears to the total value of the real asset on the date of disposal. Okay, so the value of the real asset on that date is the consideration received in respect of the past disposed plus consideration received consideration received in respect of the um, part disposed in respect of part disposed plus Investment of part disposed plus what plus the uh, market value plus the market value of the uh, undisposed parts of the undisposed uh, parts. So this is in line with the section 17 of the Capital Gains Tax Act. So uh, and you uh, you use this formula A divided by A plus B uh, multiplied by C. So why A is the cost of the uh, assets, uh, is the cost of the part of the asset disposed, and then uh, B is the cost, uh, sorry, A is the, is the price, okay, is the sales proceed or uh, value of the assets disposed, part of the asset disposed, and B is the value of the undisposed uh, asset, then C represent the cost of acquisition of the total asset and of the assets cost of acquisition of the of the whole assets okay so this formula shall be applied in computing the cost and or other sums allowable as a deduction in computing the amount of the gain accruing on the disposal so this formula is just what is just to determine the cost associated is to determine the cost associated uh, to the what to the part uh, of the asset disposed to the part of the asset uh, disposed all uh, together again connected person uh, connected persons connected persons we have connected persons sorry we have connected uh, persons okay in tax practice certain persons are treated as being so closely involved with each other that they have to be viewed as the same person or that transactions between them need to be treated differently from those at arm's length these persons are referred to as connected persons so transactions between such persons may be regarded as artificial or fictitious for the purpose of determining the tax liability arising therefrom. So this implies that the revenue can make 
whatever adjustment as it considers necessary to counteract the reduction of liability to tasks that could otherwise result from such a transaction from trust from what from such a transactions are we together so uh, in line with section 24 of uh, capital gains tax section 24 of the capital gains tax uh, an individual an individual is connected an individual is connected with his or a spouse an individual is connected with his or a spouse and then uh, with his or a relatives with his or her relatives and their spouses and their spouses and then B an individual is connected to a trustee of a settlement a trustee of a settlement a trustee of a settlement is connected a trustee of a settlement is connected with the settler is connected with the settler of that settlement is connected to the settler of that settlement and with any other person and with any person connected with any person connected with uh, the Set law with any person connected with the set law. Also, a partner, a partner is connected, a partner is connected with the person, a partner is connected with the person with whom he is in partnership with whom he is in partnership and then with the spouse and with the spouse or relative of that person with the spouse or relative of that uh, person then a company a company is connected a person is connected with another company a person sorry a company is connected with another company a company is connected with another company if one if the same person if the same person controls both if the same person controls both or two one is being controlled one is controlled by a person one is controlled by a person who has control one is controlled by a person who has control of the other who has control of the other in conjunction in conjunction with uh, in conjunction with persons connected in conjunction with persons connected with him okay or a person controls one company a person sorry A person controls one company and then persons connected with him, persons connected with him control the other, control the other or Or, or 
about the same group of persons or the same group of person the same group of persons controls both the same group of persons controls both or the companies or the companies are controlled the companies are controlled by separate group the companies are controlled by a separate group which can be regarded by a separate group which can be regarded as the same which can be regarded as the same by interchanging as the same by interchanging con by interchanging connected uh, persons by interchanging connected persons so also another point a person is connected with another person who either alone or with persons connected with him has control of it okay a person or a company okay a company is connected a company is connected with another person a company is connected with another person who either alone who either alone or with persons connected with him as control of it as control of it and last one uh, persons acting to secure or exercise control of a company are treated in relation to that company as connected with each other and with any other person acting on the direction of any of them to secure or exercise such control so relative is also defined in the heart as meaning brother sister ancestral or linear descendants or linear descendants are we together okay so uh that's all thank you for coming to class see you in the next class thank you